Welcome back to the second part. So now we're looking at something that's normal still, but not normal, not one anymore. And so I'm looking here at x, which is normal with mean 5. So this is the mean mu. And remember, this is the variance of sigma squared. And I want the probability that x is less than 0. So the way we work with this is, remember we said that if I put z as x minus the mean over sigma, then z will be normal not 1. That's a result we'll have to use all the time in this case. We'll have natural after a little while. So probability of x less than 0 is the same as probability. What I'll do is I'll do this transformation here. I'll take off the mean and divide by sigma. So if I do that with x, I get z. So 0, I subtract the mean, which is 5, and divide by sigma, which is 4. So here, sigma squared equals 16 means sigma equals 4. What I've done here, of course, is I've written that both sides have done the same thing. So it's x minus mu over sigma. In other words, that is x minus 5 over 4 is less than 0 minus 5 over 4. So I've essentially done that. And that here is now z. And I'm going to calculate this part here now. So that gives me a probability of z being less than negative 1.25. So I've transformed this from something that was normal with some arbitrary mean and some arbitrary variance to something that's normal, normal not 1, and I can look up the tables as previously. So I'm looking here at negative 1.25. So I've got to be careful. I'm looking at this part here, and the table gives me this part if I look it up, 1.25. So there's 1.2, and there's 5 there, 0.3944. So to work out the tail probability, I'm going to take that from 0 0.5, so it's 0.5 minus 0 0.3944, and that gives me 0 0.1056. So this is the basic idea. Again, look at this slide carefully afterwards to make sure you understand the ideas. Part 2 says probability of x being bigger than 10. So I can go straight away to now, I know I'm going to transform this x and I'll get z out of this. And again, it's 10 minus the mean, which is 5, and divide by standard deviation, that's 4. That gives me a probability of z being bigger than, that's 5 on the 4, that's 1.25. And straight away, I can use the symmetry. I've just had a look at There's 1.25. And I've just worked out in the previous part essentially the same thing, but on the other side. So I know that the number I'll get here from the tables is the same, 0 0.3944. And this time, I'm, again, sorry, I've got something in correct here that's bigger than, excuse me, bigger than there. And so again, I'm after this tail probability in the tail. And so that's going to be 0 0.5 minus this 0 0.3944. And I'll get the same answer as before. Excuse me. 0 0.1. 0 0.056. This next part has both ends, but that doesn't concern us because I do know that I'm going to get probability of so the negative 5 minus the mean, which is 5, divided by standard deviation, that's 4, is less than z, is less than 7, minus the mean, that's 5, divided by standard deviation, that's 4. So this comes to probability on the left-hand side, I get negative 10 on 4, so it's negative 2.5, is less than z, is less than, and here I get 2 on 4, and that's 0.5. 
So if I look up the tables, what I'm looking at on the left hand side I've got point sorry, right hand side I've got point five. On the left hand side I've got negative two point five and I'm looking at probability in the middle. So this part here, point five if I look up tables. is 0.1915 and 2.5 if I look up tables is 0.4938 so this is just the sum of those 0.49 Three eight plus zero point one nine one five plus thirteen carry one and this five eighteen carry one and that's a seven. Oops, it's a six. So that's how simple this is in the end. Moving on. The value of c says that x minus mu less than c is 0.95. Now this may look hard, but the mean is in the middle, we know that. So what I'm looking at here is something in the middle. Now I'll just start off with my normal note one just here. Now what I know is that my z is x minus mu over sigma. I've got the x minus mu here already. I divide by sigma, I will get my z. So, probability of x minus mu less than c is probability of x minus mu, and I don't actually know the value of mu in this case, it is given to me, the problem is 5, but it doesn't matter. So, what's my sigma here? Well, this is 4. So, I divide this side by 4, and that's less than c over 4. Now this side here is in exactly the, the form I want. I've taken the mean and I've divided this by sigma, the standard deviation. So that's my z. What is z in absolute value? And less than c on 4. That probability should be 0.95. So again, as I said earlier, I'm looking here at the distance from z to 0. So I'm going to go some distance this way and some distance this way. And what I want is a probability of 0.95 in the middle. So that means half of the probability is on this side, and that's 0.475. And the other half is on this side, 0 0.4750. That gives me my 0.95. So I look up tables to find the value over here that gives me a probability of 0.4750. And I've seen this before. 4750 over there. The value is 1.96 for z. So this value is 1.96. And so that must be this value here. So I get c over 4 is 1.96. And so c is 4 times that. And that's 7.84. So, a little bit trickier, but not so difficult. Again, have a look at, look at this carefully. One more example. I've got x is mu, normal mu, 0.25. And now this probability here, I want to find the value of mu. So again, I've got some information here. And I'm going to have to work through this carefully. The first thing is probability of x being less than 5.1. I standardize this in the usual way. So on the left hand side, I know that what I'll do is it's going to be x minus the mu. I don't know, the value doesn't really matter. Divide by, now this is sigma squared. That means sigma is going to be the square root of 0.25. And that's 0.5. Divide by 0.5. That should be less than 5.1 just mu, whatever the value is, over 0.5. So I know this is my z because I've standardized this. 
that's going to be z less than this number. And that probability is given to me as 0 0.9772. So I look up my normal tables again. First of all, do my sketch over here to know exactly what I'm looking at. This is normal naught one. And the probability is 0 0.9772. Now, I know this part's 0 0.5, so the value must be here somewhere. And this remaining bit is 0 0.4772. Look up tables to find the probability of 0.4772. You've seen this before as well. The 0.4772, here it is, it corresponds to 2. So the value of z is going to be equal to 2. This value here is 2. That means my number here, 5.1 minus mu over 0.5 equals 2. So to solve the equation, first of all, I'll multiply both sides by five, my, my 0.5, which I've got on the bottom here. That gives me 2 times 0.5 over here. And that's equal to 1. And so I'm solving for mu over here. We should be able to get that mu here must be 4.1. If you can't solve these equations, you'd seek help from a tutor or in the lecture. But essentially, all I've done is I've taken the mu to the left hand side, from the left hand side to the right hand side, and the one across this way. So mu here is 4.1. Now I'm getting to some word problems. Not so difficult if you have a look at this and think of this as we have just done the last few problems. So a machine fills bottles of soft drink to a menu, mean value of 210 ml with a standard deviation of 10 ml. So there's my mean mu, and there's my sigma. The label specifies a volume of 200 ml, and the bottle is underfilled if it contains less than this, otherwise it's overfilled. Okay. So what percentage of bottles are underfilled? So the first thing is define my observed a random variable here. So let x denote the volume. Then what I know here is that my x is going to be normal. The mean here is 210, and the variance here is 10 squared. Percentage of bottles underfilled means I want the probability that x is less than 200. So I now will be doing my usual trick of standardizing this. So it's 200 minus the mean, which is 210, divided by sigma, which is 10. And so this is probability of z being less than negative 1. So I look up my normal distribution tables, as I have before. There is 0. And I'm looking at negative 1 there, so I want this tail probability. This probability here from tables is 3, 4, 1, 3. We've seen this before. And so I'll get my answer is 0.5 minus this 0.3413. And that is 0 0.1587. Part B. In order to reduce the percentage of underfilled bottles to 1%, the company decides to adjust the standard deviation. What should the standard deviation be? So now I've got my random variable x is normal. The mean is 210, but the variance is unknown. And what I know is probability that x is less than 200 is now 1%, 0 0.01. So I do the usual trick. I standardize this side. So that means probability of z being less than 200 minus the mean, which is 210, upon sigma is 0 0.01. So I look at my normal tables. And I'm looking at the left-hand probability, tail probability here. 
that should be 0 0.01. Now, we look up this reverse table quite often where I have a probability and I want to find the actual value of z. And so what we have done here in the tables is actually listed those what we call critical values at the bottom here, the usual critical values. So this is a one tail. Probability, some tables will give you two tails. I'm looking at the probability of 0 0.05. It's the right hand side, these are positive values of z here. So what it lists for us is and there's the probability and there's the z value. For example, if this is 0 0.01 there, the value is 2.326. So these often used critical values, the tail values, probabilities, are listed separately, and the value of z is given over here. For example, if z is 0 .0, if the probability is 0 0.05, on the right hand side here, if this is 0 0.05, the number is 1.645. In our case, the probability is 0 0.01, so the number is 2.326. So this number here is negative. So as we saw here, this lists positive values on the right hand side because my value here is on the left hand side I realize this is negative so that means what I've got is this is negative 10 there and put that down so it's negative 10 on sigma should be equal to negative 2.326 so I solve here for sigma this negative 10 over negative 2.326. So I'll use R to work that out. So that's negative 10 divided by negative 2.326. That comes to 4.299 or 4.3. In other words, my standard deviation is going to go from what it was before, which is 10, and it's going to more than half, 4.3. So I can adjust the volumes more carefully by looking at the, the standard deviation, making it sm much smaller here. I can adjust how many bottles are actually are underfilled. The next section here is sums of normal and variables, and we'll see that in the next lecture. Thank you.